The stars, the color okay, color. so this is the first day in Sofia and Moby has just come to join us and here's yeah. Maggie and uh, here's Vlad and so today we woke up at uh, 1 p.m. 1.30 right now it's 2.30 because we were out until 3 a.m. last night and uh, so now we're gonna go uh, exchange some money and buy a uh, toothbrush and uh, toothpaste and uh, we're gonna go after that for a communist tour of Sofia and this is me on the balcony this is what it looks like if I drop my phone it really sucks uh, yeah so for the two people that will be watching this vlog which is Mama and Tanya <laughs> this is where we are we have a church behind us like this um, okay and time to this is, our, this is more about our Airbnb and uh, yeah, time to go out and show you more stuff okay, so right now we are in front of the Sodebna Palata which I think in English is the Palace of Justice, something like that so, and here's uh, Vlad and Mo and Maggie we signed up for a communist tour so uh, we're gonna start the tour soon from here, from the Sodebna Palata yeah, show the lions. Todor Zivkov. <laughs> Is it a video? Yeah. So now we are on the communist tour and we are walking to a church that was built by the communists, which uh, people know, people know something about this topic. It's like uh, oxymoron because they're supposed to forbid religion, but um, our tour guide explained uh, what happened, but I'm not gonna explain it because it's too long and I didn't film him. Okay, bye for now. Oh, look at this building with the uh, Mother Teresa and other globalist fake people. Uh, these are buildings that you can see, buildings of this architecture, you can see all over Eastern Europe. This is a style that, depending on who you're asking, is either called Stalinist Baroque or Stalinist Neoclassicism. It's typical for construction in former communist countries uh, from the late 40s and the 50s.
we are passing by the Russian church here in Sofia. And here's the Russian person in front of his Russian church. Uh, we're, we're speculating is the kupuli, I don't know how to say kupu in English, I forgot. The top balls, are they made from uh, gold or not? We don't know. And here's a Russian, Russian restaurant, Pravda. Oh no, it's called Arbat. Maybe uh, here's your people's restaurant. Maybe we'll come here later. Did you learn anything interesting they, today? They built very nice buildings. Yeah? They took care of the people. Did you find that anything uh, shocking, shocking or surprising? No, I didn't know about uh, there so much influence uh, in the world world. Yeah. So I didn't know they were like bouncing back to the Allies and the Axis. Uh, sounds like a Bulgarian thing to do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Nagy. Did you learn anything? Yeah, I learned a lot. Well, what did you learn? So many things. All right. <laughs> Can you name at least one? That you yeah, learned? I learned at least two. Ah, oh, okay. You know, uh, the two leaders, uh, Gregory Dimitrov and uh, Theodore, Theodore something. Todor Zhivkov, yeah. What was the name? Todor Zhivkov. Todor Zhivkov. 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 Yeah. Okay, I'll be back. Vlad, while we're waiting, did you learn any? Let me just take a view of where we're waiting at this very nice bar. So, uh, did you learn anything on the communist tour today? What did you think about it? Um, here uh, is uh, very floppity floppity. 
Okay. Well, I went with their choices during communism time, which was okay. not good for the country. What did you think of, so you're a Russian, what did you think of the, all the Russian things here? Not that many of them, but at least they're keeping them here. Okay. Okay, well, so we got pizzas now, and they're so delicious. I'm so hungry. I'm so happy to be eating. I might get more in the store and Vlad's filming. That's it. Look now, she agrees. Yeah, so right now we're plotting what to do tonight. Seems like uh, we're running short on time. And here just... Uh, yeah, we're gonna go to the walking pool tomorrow. Come here. This is a very expensive stone. So it's not marble? What kind of stone no, no, it is? No, marble deteriorates mm -hmm. uh, from weathering. Yeah. But but it's, it's like a, I, I forget what it is, but it's like... It's so this marble is expensive and the that's other one too? Marble, that's Nice. Oh, Nice. So Nice is also very expensive, but in Canada it's a little bit cheaper because it's abundant. So now we're walking to the... here's a cobblestone here. To the memorial of the victims of communism. This is, as I promised, the memorial dedicated to the victims of the communist regime. And you can see it contains several parts. Most obviously, uh, what you see behind me, the black wall with the two wings. Uh, it was basically built here to commemorate 2,700 people who were the first victims of the uh, communist regime after communists came to power. These are the little things that you see on the both sides. These little letters, they are 2,700 names who either you know, were killed or went missing uh, in the first few months between September of 1944 and March of 1945. Then uh, in the middle, you see the dedication of the memorial, which basically tells you the story of you know, what could happen to you. So basically it says that it's dedicated to everyone who suffered under the regime and then it tells you all those that were shot, all those that were sent to prison, all those that were sent to labor camps, all those that were exiled, all those that uh, were oppressed in any other way, as well as their families and their friends. So this is a medieval cross here. For those that are white Turks, it's because living descendants or relatives of these people who come here and retain the name with white Turks. That's why. Uh, and these people, their memory is celebrated and other people. These are just uh, names of people. Everyone who reads German or Bulgarian can just read what this is, but I think everybody else can also have a pretty good guess. What does this look like? 
Yeah. Uh, this is a piece of the Berlin Wall. And we have a piece of the Berlin Wall for two, two main reasons. Uh, reason number one, Sofia and East Berlin were both once capitals of Eastern European communist countries. So there's this kind of uh, fraternity or brotherhood between these cities. Don't really know how to explain it, uh, but it's there, it exists. Uh, the other thing, more importantly, how many of you have been to Berlin? Right, so in Berlin, after the fall of communism, the wall was everywhere, and of course they wanted to remove the wall and just keep some of it, but the rest of it had to go away. They had so many of these that they didn't know what to do with, <laughs> that they started giving them out as presents to different cities around the world, and so we got